As posted on the website, um, my intention for this evening's class is to go over the midterm rather than start a new section um, and then have the long midterm break and then come back and move on and all. Let's just finish up what we've covered so far. And I think uh, going through the, through the test might be a helpful way just also as a review of what we've covered over the past few years. So, by the way, uh, how did you find the midterm? Easy? So if you're concerned that this was long, I would say um, make sure that by the time it comes to the end of the term, that you're able to do the midterm in about two hours. Um, obviously, I know that it's, it's early days, but you're still in this course, so maybe you took it a little bit longer than the two hours needed to do it. Uh, but it should, shouldn't take you longer than two hours. For me, um, I, I take my time and I double it. So I did the term in one hour, and so I figured that two hours is a fair time for it. <coughs> well, I did it in 64 minutes, actually. So, uh, so you probably need about uh, two hours to do the midterm. Uh, in terms of difficulty, I would rate this slightly below um, middle of the range. It's actually a little bit on the easier side for me. Um, so just take that as, as what it is. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So let's take a look here. Question one was uh, really, really straightforward. You have a chemical reaction. So any reaction where you've got more moles on the other side, on the right hand side, will be a valid answer and then you, you give delta. So uh, some good examples are, for example, the airbag equation. So when an airbag detonates, you've got sodium as I two sodium as I going to two sodium plus three nitrogens. So that's a good example of an, ex of an expansion because you're creating a tremendous amount of gas, which is exactly what the airbag is supposed to do. And that uh, delta for that is 1.5. So any other valid equation would, would work. Um, the second question, for plant flow reactor, which are the relevant, um, relevant assumptions? Which ones were they? A. A, yes, definitely A. B is the rate of reaction constant. No. no. Uh, reactors are all mixed in axial direction. No. no. Uh, pressure drop is applied in axial. There must be no pressure drop in axial direction. No. no. Uh, concentration in the middle is the same as at the boundary. Yes. So A and B look pretty much the only one. Uh, which ones have you got? So I was looking at them a bit of so, Okay, question three. Uh, which one of those is rate limited? Which, which one of them is rate limited? The first or second one? First one. And the second one is equilibrium limited. So the second one, the reaction takes place so quickly that your concentrations at the end are really you're constrained only by what the equilibrium of the system is. Okay, so we can never do better than equilibrium. Equilibrium is what, what ultimately limits us. That reaction, too, will take place so fast you'll essentially reach equilibrium instantaneously. Um, question four and five will be easy. A liquid phase CSTR at higher flow rates in um, will have what type of conversions? Lower conversions and longer residues, uh, shorter residues. Okay, uh, three CSTRs in series, second order reaction, a lot of second order reactions in this midterm. 20% um, conversion per reactor, what will the, large, the last reactor be? And the first reactor, uh, and then it will also have a smaller reaction rate. So those, uh, question one was essentially three marks. Okay, so everyone should get at least 10 out of 60 on it. Let's take a look at question two, also three marks basically. Um, question two is considering the assumptions. So we've got this alpha integral, ODE I should say, differential equation, and then we should land up with this final equation over here. So first step is to assume what? Steady state. Definitely steady state. What happens? <laughs> then the the NPT is set to zero, so you can cancel that term off. That's the first assumption. Next one. No variation, no spatial variation. Well mixed, any one of those types of things. What does that, what does that do for you? That makes your RJ come out of the integral. 
Okay, so you can pull Rj out of the integral if everything inside the CSTR is constant. So including the rate, it's everywhere constant. So we can pull Rj now out of the integral, integrate that and get a V with capital V. And then you get exactly to the final. So again, five pretty much three marks over there. The key thing here is, as emphasized in the question, is you must show some logical progression, right? You can't just dump all your assumptions there and then give the final answer. You must show, because I'm assuming this, this is what happens. Because I'm assuming that, then this happens. So logic must be very clear in the answer. That's what most of the grading is for. Okay, the next one, question three. Why do we use batch reactors for, for <coughs> under rate constants? <coughs> Okay, key point, batch reactors do not run steady state. And if you plot I and mm -hmm. the concentration differences, that's a good thing, versus time, you could get K on slope and based on slope you get the what Okay, good. So the, the answer given here by Nicole was that if you, we're going to be plotting uh, concentration versus time here, or some form of concentration against time. So, a batch reactor, because it's not operating in steady state, by definition the concentration is changing over time. So in one experiment, you get all the data you need. The slope is going to probably be related to Ka, and, and alpha is going to be in your intercept, or vice versa. So um, we're going, the, the key of the question is not to show how to get Ka and alpha, but the slope and intercept are going to be a function of Ka and alpha for us. We're going to see after the midterm break, uh, not the first week after the midterm break, but the week after that, how we go about doing it in, in several cases. Okay, so batch reactors are really important for that, for that reason. Also, they're really easy to control and keep isothermal at constant pressure. So for those reasons, um, we, can, we can do those great expressions. Okay, so question four took a little bit more time. Let's take a look at question four. For the liquid phase reaction, we've got A going to D, second order kinetics. Okay, so here's very important. Here's where we need to kick in with, um, with that procedure I'd like you to follow. So especially for question four and question six, we have to follow the process. Don't just go in to the question and start it. So let's take a look, we've got define, So the defined step tells us, let's write down what we know and what we don't know. We know that this is a liquid phase reaction. Constant volume can be assumed. We know that there's second order kinetics. So part of the defined phase is, is what we know and what we don't know. So it's liquid phase. We also know that minus Ra is Kca squared for second order kinetics. We get uh, Ca naught, one mole per meter. Thirty-five percent conversion after one hour. So at T equals one hour, we get thirty-five percent conversion. What we're asked for then is to calculate conversion and concentration if we use a different Ca naught. So that's what we know. What we don't know, what's our unknown here? Okay. Okay. We don't know our rate constant. Anything else we're not sure of? X. Okay, and then the part we're going to answer there at the end is if we're using CA naught equals 5 moles per liter. What is CA and what is X going to be? And so that's our objective here is to find that. We've kind of done a bit of the explore step as well. Define and explore are, are pretty similar in some instances. I would say exploring the fact here that this is liquid phase <laughs> tells me that my volume is constant. Um, other than that, there's not too much in the, in the explore phase. So let's take a look at our strategy, my plan. For this, what's what would be your strategy? 
before you go in and start to do the calculation, what might you want to do? Which equation? So you guys have suggested to find the equations in terms of k, but what equations? For Back reactor, that's that equation. Make sure it's in terms of conversion, and then from there, find, find k. Okay, so the strategy suggested here is batch reactor equation solve for solve for k in terms of conversion x. Okay, then that's still not getting to our answer. So what's next? What else would you be in your plan? Okay, recognize here, we could, we could recognize obviously that K is not going to change whether I'm using a stronger initial concentration or, or a weaker one, K is going to be constant. So then the next one is, the next one is to solve for the second concentration, initial concentration. From T. Yeah, so solve for concentration in X given T and the new C A. Okay, so so <coughs> this is this is important. It might seem tedious and it might seem a waste of time, but I do want to emphasize this planning step is seems trivial in this question. In question six, the plan uh, question four, six, yes, it wasn't so trivial. Right? So planning was far more important than the other question. Here is a nice simple example to show the planning step. Yes. Um, you have to specifically say one No, no, you definitely don't. Okay, but what you will find is that nine times out of ten students who fail questions do not follow the strategy. They just go ahead and put everything they can on the paper. I will not grade stuff. If you just throw stuff on the paper and it's not correct, it doesn't get graded. Okay, so that's a that's even myself when I've written exams in undergrad, I did that strategy. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't work. Okay, so so don't put. Don't put crap on your page that's not relevant. Let's take a look now at trying to follow that strategy. Okay, so let's, let's uh, we can start from the batch. Integral from zero to x. Okay, so that's my, my batch systems equation. Recognize that Na from my stoichiometric table is Na naught, 1 minus x. I can go divide that by V, so here I'm using my constant volume assumption, and I'll get Ca, Ca naught, 1 minus x. Substitute that into minus RA is KCA squared. So substitute that in, put that into the integral. I'm going to skip over a few steps here because I'd like to make sure we get to the other question. And you'll essentially get T is 1 over KA CA naught. Right, it's 1 over 1 minus X minus 1. Okay. So this is the suggestion again, it works symbolically as far as possible. So even though I know what CA naught is, I don't sub it in. Don't sub in all my, my conversion just yet. Let's just work symbolically. And the reason is because I'm going to come back and reuse this equation with different values of CA naught. So if I've worked symbolically, it, it's easier for me to come back and reuse this equation. So what you can show is uh, using that, um, that you can solve for conversion, uh, sorry, solve for KA. CA, CA naught, 1 minus x. Um, so, so for convert, uh, rate constant k, you'll get 0.538. Units are important, liters per mole per hour. Okay. Now, if CA naught Let's go to the last step of our strategy using the new CA naught and for a time of one hour. The CA naught now is 5 moles per liter. 
I will find that my conversion x is higher, 0.73. Okay, so my conversion has gone from 35%, I'll just put my old values here for reference. So I had 0.35 originally. Also CA leaving your reactor is equal to 1.35 moles per liter. Whereas originally you can show that CA was equal to 0.65. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. You'll get some grades for doing this. What's important is this next part. Explain why your answer makes sense. Does it make sense to you that the concentration with the stronger reagent is going to be higher than if you use a weaker reactant? Why? <laughs> Okay, so here's my new system with stronger CA naught. Here's my old system with weaker CA naught. So you're, you're correct, it does make sense that 7.73, I should get a greater conversion with a stronger CA naught. Oh, okay. Can you ask why? That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, because with the higher concentration, especially because the order with respect to that concentration is greater than zero, so you know that as you increase your concentration, the rate is faster and has the conversion. And that specific time is more. Okay, so you've got fixed time, one hour, one hour. Because you're starting with a stronger material, and our rate is proportional to the concentration, minus RA is KCA. So I'm going to start my batch off now with a higher concentration. I'm going to get very rapid conversion initially with a stronger reactant. I'm going to end up with a higher overall conversion in the same time frame. Yeah. But I think you said that K is, where a secondary reaction is a function of Minus R is a function of C. K, K isn't a function of C. It is a constant. So it does make sense that we should get a higher conversion. What's interesting here is that even in one hour, we still land up with more unreacted A than we did previously. So with the old system, I, I, I ended up with the weaker CA, so lower concentration CA. And that's purely just because it's a trade-off, right? I, I'm not going to always, if I wanted this CA here, finding it to be lower, I would need to react for longer and longer. So I still get greater overall conversion. It doesn't necessarily translate into the final concentration that's going to be. Okay, so important to discuss those issues at the end. Yeah. The number of things was we going to be, we have seen that the future is negative to our case squared. Um, if it, if, okay, so the question is if that was A plus B going to D, it's saying here it's with second order kinetics. So A plus B going to D, what would second order kinetics look like if it was an elementary reaction? So A plus B going to D. If it's a second order reaction, elementary, what would that rate expression be? C A C B. C A C B. Second order overall. It's first order with respect to A. It's first order with respect to B, but second order overall. Okay, so that's that's important to understand. Here, the question did not state that it's an elementary reaction, and that would need to be in your assumptions. In your answer. So assuming this is an elementary reaction, then you can write this down. Okay. It's not guaranteed that it is that, so you must uh, state that in your answer as well. Any other questions on question four? Question five. So here, here again, the insight is the following. We've got a gas phase reaction. So if I'm looking at defining, exploring, and so forth, let's say, let's put down what we know here. So what do I know in the gas in the system? What are my knowns? Yeah, 
Okay, so our initial our initial concentrations of A and B are the same. Anything else you know? Do we know KC? Do we know KC? Yeah. K1 over K minus 1. We also know that this is a batch reactor. So that we've got a constant volume. Is it a batch reactor? Is it a batch reactor? Okay. So is there anything we don't know? We don't know the pressure. That's important for gas phase systems, the pressure. And the X equilibrium. Okay, we don't know X equilibrium, but that is that's what we solve it for. Okay, so this this is our aim. So what's my plan here? How am I going to tackle this problem? Is it something we've seen before? That's one of the valid strategies. When you're looking at planning your process, is this a type of problem I've seen before? And how would I solve it based on that? We've seen it before, so what's our strategy? Stoichiometric table. And we're looking at that for concentration. to get concentrations. <coughs> Anything else? What else are we going to do? We need the equation for KC. Okay, so we've got the equation for KC. I kind of. Oh, okay, right. so KC, and that's going, okay, so we're, we're planning, so we don't write it out yet. So KC is equal to, yeah. Anything else? Once we have that, what's our next step? Just, just start. You just want to start, right? <laughs> so, sub in and solve for X equilibrium. Now, let me emphasize, you don't have to write this down, but as long as you've got this in your head, you're fine. For longer problems, holding these multiple steps in your head simultaneously might be problematic, especially if you're stressed in an exam. You don't want to skip a step. So I highly recommend, even now in assignments and in, in questions like this, you go and just mentally, uh, sorry, on, in pencil on, on one of the other pages in your notebook or on the exam sheet, just write down little bullet points for yourself on the strategy. It is extremely tempting to go into the next step and substitute it and try to solve. But for more complex problems, you will find it much easier to, to plan your strategy first before launching into the problem. Okay, so. We've got that now. Let's follow that approach from the stoichiometric table. We get our concentrations. So CA from a batch system. CA, CA north, 1 minus X. CB. And the CC, which I See the product here. CA naught, theta C plus X. Okay. Unknowns, theta B, theta C. What can we say about theta B? Theta B is 1 because of the equimolar inverse. Theta C, 0 because of the C. Okay. So KC, our next step in the plan, right? KC in terms of these concentrations. We'll use our curly braces to represent equilibrium concentrations of A, B, and C. Sub in those, let's call X now X to the Q. So C A naught, theta C is zero plus X, so that's X equilibrium. Concentration of A is equal to B, we know that. That's one of our, our knowns up there when we were looking at the problem. So here in the denominator, I can simply square. I can square the following, CA0, theta B, or 1 minus X. In this case, theta B and 1 minus X is the same, so 1 minus X squared. Yeah. Is it okay if I start from KC and then go to 
from the equation where you get the reverse of and the forward reactions and you plug them together. And that's how you get the case. But is that how you'll end up with this? Yeah, I end up with that. Right. Okay, right. so you will end up with it, yeah, because that's, that's one step ahead of the solution, exactly. Okay, so what else uh, we know? We mentioned here earlier someone had said Kc is equal to the ratio of the rate constants, K1 over K minus 1. Let's just quickly explore that a little bit. Um, if we sub in over there, we get K1 is 500 moles per uh, liter per mole divided by 0 0.0032 hours to the minus one. Sorry, 500 meters per mole per hour. Which then simplifies out to 15625 meters per mole. Is that number okay? 15625 meters per mole. Are the units okay? Okay, so from here we expect units of mole of liters per mole as Kc, and I do get that. So someone was asking me in the exam, like, or told me your your units don't make sense. <laughs> well, no, they do make sense. <laughs> okay, so Kc is one five six two five liters per mole. And I can now get a bit of cancellation out here in the numerator x equilibrium divided by CA naught 1 minus x equilibrium squared. Can I sub in CA naught? No, I don't have any information to find CA naught. Some people did write correctly CA naught is equal to YA naught times P initial over RT initial. But the problem is here we still don't have the pressure, we have the temperature. So either one of those approaches, you can sub in CA naught in terms of pressure, but at the end you've still got two unknowns, X E Q or and some form of the concentration of pressure. Okay. So the problem cannot be solved for X E Q as stated. We need one more extra piece of information. Any questions on that? Sorry. If we put it into a quadratic formula, is that, is that just if just you put it in the quadratic formula, but they'll still get us. Yeah. yeah, it's just a bit more work. I didn't expect you to go that far, but if you did, fine. Okay, so let's take a look at the last problem. So uh, a number of you spent quite some time on this problem. Let's just break it down. Part of the device step is to draw a picture of the system to understand what we're doing over here. So let's take a look at that. It's a plug flow reactor. And I've got pressure coming in and I've got pressure leaving. I've got Bed here, so I've got a certain amount of catalyst W, total weight. I also have conversion at the entry point, and I have a conversion at the exit. So conversion at the beginning is, is set to zero, um, and finally we've got conversion capital S. What we're going to do is set up two ODEs, the X by the W and the Y by the W, that will find us the conversion and pressure profile across the reactor. So that's my picture of, of where I'm going. What do I know? There's a lot of information I do know. So let's put it all down. You know the rate equation? The rate equation? Yeah, you know temperature. Okay, temperature is? 400. We must convert the units, yeah. 
So we know the flow rate, the volumetric flow rate. We know the volumetric flow rate. Q is 10 liters per minute. And if you're working in SI units, that's 0.00030166. We know the inner pressure, it's 200 kilopascal. Okay. And then we know the gas density. Gas density, rho, 7 kilograms per meter cube. And then we know the viscosity. We know the viscosity. <coughs> Mu is 3 times 10 to minus 5 pascal seconds. Okay, so now we know for the pipe, we know the. the uh, Okay, so diameter of the pipe gets us our cross-sectional area. So from the diameter of the pipe, we can get the cross-sectional area. I'm jumping a little bit ahead, and sometimes that's quite okay for trivial steps like this in the known part. So AC is pi times 0 0.05, so it was 5 centimeters to 0 0.05 divided 2. So it's 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0 is 0.0020196 meters squared. What else do I know? The length of my pipe is 120 meters. The moment I know the area and the Z, I can calculate the volume of my pipe. So let's just put that down. The volume is uh, important for later on. It's 0.2356 meters cubed. Anything else? Because we're going to need to uh, find the, the way of catalyst. Yeah. That's exactly what this is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we know um, the void fraction. The void fraction. Okay, there's another piece of important information. We do know that A goes to half B plus 3 over 2 C. So there's quite a bit of, uh, of notes here. Another piece of information that's given up here is uh, YA0 is equal to YI0 is equal to 0.5. So we've got equimolar ratios of the speed of A and the inner gas. Density of the pellet, 2,000 kilograms per meter cube of pellet, is that rho B or rho C? So if my investment is equal to C naught plus C naught. No, no. Sorry, I didn't hear. Why not? If my investment is equal to C naught, why B naught? Is C naught plus C naught? No, in this book in general. No, it's never. Those are natural fractions. You can never say anything. Do you have the world? Okay, uh, one other piece of information is uh, for these people, just a second here, everyone. Please make sure you work in terms of SI units. So that rate constant K just needs a little bit of work. Uh, K is given as 0.6 meters squared per mole per minute per grams of catalyst. We can write that as um, 1 times 10 to the minus 5 meters to the power of 6 per mole. <coughs> kilogram of catalyst. Okay, so always make sure you work in SI units. It's incredibly important. Here's why. Later on, you're going to take these equations and substitute them into MATLAB or Polymer. If you don't get your units correct, you're going to find reactors that are like 20 kilometers long or 2 centimeters long. Or, yeah, exactly. So you must, must, must convert to SI units always. Okay, so that's our notes. What don't we know? Why is Y not equal to Y? Because the question says that it's very negative ratio. Like if I could say it was something that's the same. Why is Y not equal to Y? So y angles is y angles and y angles are broken. Oh, we can talk about that. Okay, so what don't we know? What are our unknowns? Thank you.
from the Ergen equation. I'm kind of jumping ahead. We know we're going to use the Ergen equation. The Ergen equation relies alpha and beta. And alpha and beta require g. Anything else? We don't know. Rho p, rho p, rho p, rho p, rho p, rho p, rho Delta epsilon, we're going to need those two as well. Okay. And we also need our other unknowns, our y and x. But those are exactly what's required of us. Okay, so let's take a look at the explore phase. So this is our unknowns. Let's take a look at the explore. One thing is to recognize that this is a gas phase reaction, so we're going to get expansion and contraction. We're going to have to use a stoichiometric table that uses those terms for delta and epsilon. So that's why those two are listed in the unknowns. Other thing is recognize that this is a packed bed. That means the Ergen equation is going to be useful, so we're going to need alpha and beta. That's why these are listed in the unknowns. <coughs> Some of the things to explore before we can even get going is we can quite quickly calculate W. The weight of catalyst we're going to require is 1 minus 5 times the cross-sectional area times Z, or the volume in other words. That's volume over there. Multiplied by rho C. Okay, so I know, I know all of those terms, and I can tell you I'm at uh, 235.6 kilograms. So my pack bed has that many kilograms of double units, over 120 units. So those are some of the things in the explore phase. Now let's plan our strategy. Here's how you go about these problems. This is the handout we had in class last time. Let's take a look at it and follow this strategy. So we follow this flow sheet. Our first step is to do the general mole balance. This is usually no action required at this step. We simply just write it down. Second stage of our plan, I'm going to just follow this as we go. So, step one, our goal balance. Now, I will recommend that in an exam or test, you actually do follow this plan and number it as, as numbered here in the flow sheet, in the flow chart. So, you don't have, this will save you from having to write it down. In your, in your notes. You can simply just go ahead and follow these first steps. Yes. If we, when we go like, when we put the batch reactor um, all down, we have to state the assumption again. <coughs> so that's what we're going to do here now. Is we're going to go to the PBR, FA naught, dx by dw is equal to minus RA. And then you write, assuming well mixed, in radial direction. And steady state. And the reason for that is quite clear. We're going to start in later sections of the course. We won't have that assumption of world mixed in the radial direction. Okay, especially if you guys are going to take 4K. We cannot assume that anymore. 3K, which that will hold for most of the time. Okay, so assuming well mixed in the radial direction is steady state. So now I can, um, oh my, sorry, dash. So now I can sub in, um, oh sorry, not sub in, go to step three, I should say. Is minus RA given in terms of the function of x? No. So no. Step four, determine the rate law in terms of the concentrations of the reacting species. So we're actually given that, given. Minus RA is equal to KCA squared. In some situations, you may have to find that, or if it's specified as an elementary reaction, then you can write down what it is. Step five, use the stoichiometry to express the concentration of the function of conversion. Gas phase, T is equal to T0, we can write this down immediately. So step five, you can say from the stoichiometric tables, CA is CA naught, 1 minus x, 1 plus epsilon x, p over p naught. Okay, and then very clearly here to add, assuming t is equal to t naught, that's your isothermal assumption. 
Det er jo det sådan her på 10, 10 noter. 10 og det 10, 10 noter og det 10. Okay, så so step 5. Do we go across or do we go down? We go down, because the next step is if p is equal to p naught, we can go to this next equation, which is our Bergen equation. So here's my first, my first ODE given for me. Block number 7 is giving me my second ODE. So, no need to go and derive this lengthy equation to rederive the Ergen equation. You can use it as is, but this has now introduced new unknowns for us. It's introduced alpha. It's introduced epsilon over here earlier on. We have an epsilon term and an alpha term. So let's uh, let's go work through those. To get uh, epsilon, we need delta. Delta is equal to one for this. System. Mark plus 3 over 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. Epsilon, y a naught times delta is 0.5 times 1. C a we've got already up there for us. So now we're now we're actually ready to go. Right, so here, if we just uh, shrink the center a bit. If we had come up earlier at step three and we had our rate in terms of the function of conversion, we could have gone straight ahead and solved the system. At this point, we do have that. Now I've got CA, my rate is in terms of CA, and I have an equation here that specifies CA as a function of conversion form. So now I'm ready to substitute in. So I've got rates in terms of conversion I can substitute in over there. Here's one little problem though. There's an FA naught over there. What's FA naught? CA naught times Q. So FA naught is CA naught times Q naught. I know Q naught, that's one of my knowns. I know CA naught. Do I know CA naught? Right, and CA naught is equal to Y naught times P naught over RT naught. I know my pressure, I know my temperature, I know Y naught, so I can get CA naught. What's the break number? I've decided. Okay, so. Okay, so. We're starting to see how to use the strategy. We're, we're simply, we write down what we know, what we don't know. We simplify, and when we get stuck on a new unknown, we go and find what that unknown is. So the, what I'll end up with is just uh, going through the Ergen equation here, minus alpha 2y. Two, two so let's just take a look at that. The alpha term is required over there. That's given as 2 beta naught times the cross-sectional area rho c1 minus the velocity times p naught. Little problem over there. I don't know beta naught. <laughs> beta naught is a pretty messy equation, as you guys uh, saw in the derivation. But I will just, uh, just a second here, people. Uh, let's just finish up. Uh, beta naught is a function of everything that we have here as known. There's just one other variable that we do, don't know, and that's g. g is your mass flux, kilograms per second per cross-sectional area. How can I find g? Um, density times Velocity. What's velocity? 
and it's rho times q naught, volumetric flow rate. So kilograms per meter cube times meter cube per second. So here's the key, G is mass flux, it's the amount of mass because you square the unit square. So you can calculate G then. Once you have that, then find your main naught is straightforward. Main naught is equal to 68 times 0.45 plus 1.5. Units are incredibly important, so please make sure you've got your units in there. So once I've got beta, I can then go ahead and pop this alpha. <laughs> so if you're looking for alpha, it's at 5.17 times 10 to the minus 4. One over units of mass, kilograms. And then I'm ready to go. Now I've got all my unknowns, and I can write out my rho So if I was looking to write out my rho over here. Okay. I will have videos and step-by-step instructions on the course website for all 